Welcome back, folks, and thanks for sticking with us this Sunday morning. I hope you all are having a fantastic weekend. Well, joining us now, we are talking to Pamela Morales from the Museum of South Texas, <laughs> South Texas History. I've been tongue-tied all morning. I don't know what's going on. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Now, we are talking about an exciting event that you have coming up. It is the Pioneer and Ranching Crafts Day. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the museum itself. It is definitely a treasure here in the Valley that has a lot of uh, just great uh, knowledge, information to just kind of go on out there. And I know a lot of people do know what it is, but for those who might not or might ha have ever been and visited, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, so definitely the Museum of South Texas History is located in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, we're across the county courthouse, north of it. Um, and basically the Museum of South Texas History just highlights the history of the region. So South Texas and also Northeastern Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and the timeline that we sort of cover, it's a very broad overview of prehistory all the way till the 20th century, till about the 1950s. Wow. So it's a, a really big museum. <laughs> we are two story. Um, and it, you know, we just have just a lot of artifacts um, that come from this region and really highlight um, how, you know, the Native Americans were here and then the Spanish settlers and it just goes through all of that. And of course the ranching and then the agriculture business that we had. Um, in the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course we also have our uh, feature which is the 1910 jail. Um, currently it's closed. Mm -hmm. um, we did just finish renovating the building, um, but right now it's still closed to the public. Um, hopefully by 2020, we should be open with the building. How exciting, that's yeah. great. I know a, a lot of people that, when I first moved down here, a lot of people that was the first thing that they had mentioned. You need to go to the museum, you need to go to the museum. And it is now something that I do share with the public itself. When I have visitors, I definitely tell them to go. And you know, we have so many of our coworkers here that love it. They think it's so great and they can learn so much from it. And I think it's uh, truly a gem here in the Valley. So if you haven't gone and partaken in you know, just the different displays and the different uh, things they like, just to walk through it. It is really amazing. Um, but you guys have this great event coming up and it is the Pioneer and Ranching Craft Day. So tell us a little bit about that. So Pioneer and Ranching Craft Day, um, it's about, it's been about 25 years that wow. the museum has hosted this particular event. Um, and it sort of highlights the homestead skills okay. of the region, also ranching as well, because ranching is a big part of yeah. this area. Um, so we kind of sort of invite the community, especially volunteers, to um, demonstrate those activities. So that can include, um, you know, spinning, um, kind of uh, messing with the cotton or mm -hmm. the, the wool and how they sort of um, worked with that and also butter churning, um, which is also an activity for the children mm -hmm. that they can enjoy and really be hands-on with that as well. Um, and then also we have uh, food vendors, um, you know, just sort of highlighting the, the regional food that that is here in this region. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have uh, performances this year. We're really glad to invite um, Again, uh, Matt and the Herdsman, so Matt Castillo, he'll be returning and performing. Um, and then also the Texas Sweethearts, they'll be returning. It's a female group that they play a lot of Tejano and Conjunto tunes. So mm -hmm. we're really excited about that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just really, this, this event is just really highlighting the, the region and the way people lived, um, you know, obviously back in those mm -hmm. days um, and this year we are highlighting the tortilla okay. um, so we're gonna have a really big board where we're gonna ask people do you prefer corn mm -hmm. tortilla or flour tortilla um, we kind of sort of did a little uh, mini version in our office and oh yeah, yeah so corn tortilla in our office is, a, is a, <laughs> the go-to yeah tortilla. so um, we'll also have a display on the tortilla so we have a lot of artifacts and photos uh, related to the tortilla so mm -hmm. we'll hopefully have that out um, by that day, which is a uh, February 16th, Pioneer Ranching Crafts Day. Definitely, it sounds great. And I have to ask, I, I think it's so interesting because a lot of times people always love to take a glimpse into history and look at how did people live back then and how did how did they do this or how did they do just the easiest tasks you would think now, you know, if you're thinking of butter, well, I'll go to the store, buy a tub of butter and I'll keep it in my fridge. But that's not how it really worked back then. And so yeah. it's super interesting. And I have to imagine that kids and even, you know, adults love to see those activities and kind of watch, hey, how did this 
how did they do this? Definitely. Um, we do have a, a few other hands-on activities. We do have roping. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have a, a, a metal cow, so it's like a pig <laughs> cow, not a real cow, because uh, it won't fit in there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, so people will learn how to rope and how they would rope the cattle. Um, I, every time I'm out there, I always see adults, you know, they're trying to rope yeah. the, the cattle. <laughs> so that's always a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, you know, the activities aren't just for children. Mm -hmm. We'll have, um, you know, some the adults can participate as well. Wow, it definitely sounds exciting. And it, it, I'm sure a lot of people get excited when they go out there and they're kind of just like, you know, taking in just everything that you guys have to offer. And I think it's great that you guys are featuring the tortilla, which, you know, yes. everybody everybody loves their tortillas down here, of course. I love mine too. I'm more flour, so, you know, yes. it's, I'll be, I'll be glad and interested to see, you know, what the outcome is down there when you do the kind of board of which one is the winner. Yes. Um, so that's pretty great. And so I think it's fantastic how you find a lot of these volunteers that still know how to do these skills. You know, you said spinning and, you know, that's not something that you would think of yes. really known to today. We do have... Um the St. Saint or, Saint George Orthodox Church in FAR, they okay. help us out a lot. Um, yeah. So not only do they do that spinning and the cotton and the wool, um, the, there's a soap maker, um, wow. so he makes soap. Um, they also do candles made out of beeswax, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Um, so, you know, it's just the community, they just come together and they really help us out to bring um, and showcase these these skills. So shout out to St. George. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, and then, you know, of course, there's other people that also do wood carving and mm -hmm. basket weaving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, I just, we ju we're just so grateful for our volunteers. Definitely. And this has been going on for about 25 years, you said? 25 yes. years? Wow, I can't, that's amazing. And I'm sure every year that people are just so extremely fascinated every time they continue to go. I'm sure you guys have, uh, repeat attendees that continue to go every single year and you know we're taking a, a quick little photo and you can definitely see the kids are interested I believe that was butter churning yes. so I think it's so great that people you know you guys have those kind of experiences where they can do hands-on they can kind of see hey this is taking me a little bit back into history and I think that's the best way to do it is doing hands-on activity because then it means more to them and they yes. remember things a little bit differently so it is it is pretty exciting so um, as far as tickets go do they need to purchase any beforehand is it free or how do people go about getting into the okay. event so the event um, we do charge okay. um, it's a so not only do you get the experience of pioneer ranching craft mm -hmm. state but also the museum exhibits are open awesome. so you get both mm -hmm. um, into when you purchase your your admittance to mm -hmm. the museum. Mm -hmm. um, this year we're trying uh, a new feature, okay. so we are pre-selling tickets. Awesome. Um, so go onto the website, uh, mm -hmm. mosthistory.org, um, and there should be a banner saying Pioneer Ranching Crafts Day, and then you click on it and it'll send you directly to the event page and there should be a link so you can uh, purchase your tickets. Perfect. Um, so we highly recommend that because yeah. the lines do get pretty long. Yeah. Um, so we're pre-selling and the tickets or the for ad m museum admission for that event is uh, adults is eight dollars and then seniors uh, students and active military is uh, six dollars children ages uh, four through twelve is five dollars and children newborns to three-year-old um, are free and also we do have friendship um, so that's basically a, a benefit of the museum. You'll, you'll get free admission to our events. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Pamela, for coming in. It sounds like it's going to be super exciting, and it's going to be really great, and I'm excited for the public to head on out there and check it out. So thank great. you so much. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us this Sunday morning. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and I will see you next Sunday.